Good afternoon. Welcome to Pal Talks Tech Now Network. I'm Henry Blodgett. My guest is Mary Abduhayalu, one of the foremost security experts. Last time we talked, we talked about general security issues online, which are a little bit intimidating when you really get to know them. Today we're going to focus on social networks. Obviously the social network phenomenon has taken over the world over the last five years, but with that has come a lot of danger to individuals, to corporations, both financially and reputationally. A couple of horror stories we'll share with you, but first let's just talk, to put Facebook in, in perspective, this is a company that didn't exist five to seven years ago, now has more than 150 million users worldwide. Unbelievable growth. I think they got to that level 85 years faster than the telephone, so it's just taken over everything. And yet already, people have really started capitalizing on fraud, where they're pretending to be your friends, and where you have malicious apps that are riding on top of Facebook and so forth. So as you look at this growth, coming from the perspective of security, do you feel like we should be doing anything differently as a society? Should we be somehow controlling the growth of these networks? Should we be educating people? Should we be holding Facebook? Facebook to a different standard? Uh, first of all, what is Facebook? Facebook is what connects people. And anything that connects people will be used maliciously by people who are trying to spread malicious activities. So should we control the growth of it? Not at all. Should we help them grow faster? Most definitely, because we need connectivity as human race. And one thing that we should be doing, though, is being responsible in feeding people the right information, trusted information, and trusted data. And that's what we should be doing. And, and let's talk some more specifics. So a couple of examples on Facebook. We, we talked about on, on the Business Insider, we had a, a typical Nigerian scam where it was actually brilliantly executed, where somebody pretended to be somebody's friend on Facebook. The individual thought that their friend was saying, look, I'm in London, I'm stuck, my credit card got rejected, I need you to wire me $900 so I can get a ticket and get out of the country. I mean, it sounds ridiculous when you hear about it, and yet you're so accustomed to thinking that this is your friend, there's the picture, you've communicated with them a hundred times online, you think it's your friend, you're going to trust that and eventually this person kept talking and it became clear that it wasn't his friend and sniffed it out but it's very easy to see how you get duped by that and then another type of example is you have a Facebook app that looks so exciting, it looks legitimate, you download and you, you in, install it and you start using it and suddenly it starts stealing passwords or asking you for information and, and tapping into other sorts of data. So from your perspective, do you feel like this should be Facebook's responsibility to protect us from this? Because you almost have to have an education course every day to keep people up to date on what the, the risks are. Very much so. I mean, let's look at the real world first of all. In physical world, we go to supermarkets to buy food. In digital world, what we have is our digital identities. Our digital identities are who we are. And in digital world, we have people who are feeding us data and information. Just like CEO of Walmart is responsible for feeding us the right food, making sure that the ingredients are clearly displayed when you in the packaging. The way that we're being fed information by any network, including Facebook, should be following similar standards to likes of Walmart. There is no difference, in my view, between what we eat in digital world and what we buy in physical world. It's the same thing, we're being fed information. And that has to be trusted information. When you go to Walmart or any supermarket to buy something, if you cannot trust what's inside, then it becomes a big issue. And that is what we have today on internet. You go to Facebook, you are being fed information, and I cannot trust that information. Now, that's a big problem. And uh, do you, so you think that's Facebook's issue, though? Because Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, I think what he would say is, look, we're very early in our development. We are relying on our user and developer community to do a lot of the work for us and to make this as vibrant a platform as we can. We can't be held responsible for every interaction. Obviously, we'll try to make it as safe as possible, but if somebody figures out a way to impersonate one of your friends, we can't be responsible for that. Uh, for a mature industry, that sounds ludicrous. Obviously, your Walmart sure. example, you would never hold a company like that to that standard. It would sound silly. But for a company like this that is still an emerging startup, how do we 
hold that, what has to happen for them to be held responsible for that? You say it's an emerging uh, startup, but you also said that they are bigger than the already. Right. already. So they already have the resources and they are already big enough. And it's time to get responsible. It's time to be responsible. So Mark, be responsible. So w what has to happen? We'll talk in detail about, about some of the scams that are happening and how you can address that. But do you, in your mind, is it primarily a technical issue? Is it technology? Is it educating users? Is it making it m Facebook much more of a closed system where it's completely controlled? I mean, wh what has to happen for this? I don't think Facebook has to change the way that they're doing business as such. They just have to enable the users with an ability to trust the information that they have. They should be. The there should be better user authentication so that you know someone in Nigeria cannot take over someone's you know uh, account easily. There should be better standards for uh, applications being checked. Technologies out there, technologies do exist. It's just having the right processes within Facebook to deploy those technologies to be available to users. And do you feel like if Facebook should say, look, we will guarantee any transaction if you get defrauded using our system? We'll cover that. I mean, again, in this situation, I don't think I, I don't think they should guarantee anything, you know. But that doesn't mean that they should do nothing. They should do something about it. They should follow the best stand, best practices. What is it that they are following to make sure that user authentication is done? I don't see two-factor authentication being done, you know, for uh, their accounts. I, I don't see anything that's being done to authenticate data that they give. I don't see anything being done to authenticate applications that they're giving out to people. So they have to start bringing all those in. So on applications, I think Mark Zuckerberg would say, look, again, we want it to be an open community. We don't want to control which type of applications are on there. We don't want to have to vet them, presumably because it would be uh, it, uh, It's not expensive. about controlling. It's not about vetting. Expensive, they make lots of money. Uh, you know, not yet, but they well, have lots of money. They have lots of money, you know, and they're making a lot of money from from advertising as well. And uh, it's making sure that those applications go through the standard process. It's very simple, really, to push those through the, you know, it, it, applications are not in millions. We have vetted as Komodo, literally four million applications, and you know they are bigger than us in terms of revenue model. And so this is effectively what you're saying is more like the Apple's iPhone app store where you have to be approved to be in the store and people are screaming that Apple is somehow saying, well, this application is cool enough to be in there and this one isn't and they're applying their own worldview. But it actually sounds fairly reasonable. They're just saying, look, we're not going to let you upload software that's going to take over the iPhone and spray people's credit card numbers all over the place and, and so forth. So I mean, it sounds like